So before we start the discussion session, I thought I'll tell you a few more things which have an impact on the way the T10KT uh, workshops may be conducted in future. If you recall, we had tried to do this, which is instead of a two-week face-to-face workshop, we said one week will be done online by the participants. The equivalent one-week work they will do within one month. That is what we have stipulated. And the face-to-face -face portion was cut down to about six days of actual active work instead of 10 days. That helped us reduce the cost. That actually, in many cases, increased the participation and the work done by the participants because a lot of work was done online beforehand. We will be encouraging most of our future workshops to be conducted in that model. From a cost perspective, instead of 5,000 rupees as the base cost for uh, 30 people participating, fixed cost plus variable cost, the cost was coming down to how much? 3,200 rupees. So that is a substantial cost saving without in any way reducing the impact of the project. Because that six-day face-to-face uh, portion is good enough, provided participants have done work beforehand. The one problem that participants indicated was that that one month time during which they had to do one week equivalent of work was a heavy duty time for them. So whether that could be spread over one and a half months or two months, that means over eight weeks if they are supposed to do work equivalent of five days, then that may be relatively easier. That is what they had said. So this was essentially a uh, what I call part online <coughs> workshop. Now, while we have conducted this model and effectively, there is a larger phenomena that is happening across the world. All of you would have heard of the word MOOCs. Have you? These are massive open online courses. So let me take five minutes to tell you about the MOOCs in general and about the Indian activities in particular. Uh, online education is nothing new. For three decades, online education, personalized tutoring system, machine intelligence to auto-grade things, etc., has been going on. But on the large-scale deployment, things started happening about three years ago when three companies were set up in the US, two companies on the West Coast, one called Coursera, and Udacity, both came out of Stanford, but Stanford University had no part in it. The third one called EDX, which was a not-for-profit company set up by Harvard and uh, MIT, who put in $30 million each of their own money to set up this company. They all started collecting and getting big courses designed from top-notch, uh, well-known professors from top-notch universities. They formed consortium of universities. They built platforms for online delivery, and they started conducting courses online for global learners. Within a very short time, within one year, most of them had lakhs of learners registering for various top courses across the world. In 2012, IIT Bombay started looking at this very seriously. So we started evaluating what are the possibilities for IIT Bombay. We decided that it would be best to tie up with one of the institutions so that we don't spend too much time in getting on board. Accordingly, a committee was appointed here and we signed a memorandum of understanding with EDX. There were two reasons which helped us to decide in favor of EDX rather than others. All companies are doing good job, but EDX for a not-for-profit company, which was more like IIT style of working. Second, they were the only company which had announced that the entire software platform which they were developing for online education will be released in open source in 2013 June. Now that meant a lot for us because then we felt that we could take that platform, adopt it for not only IIT needs but for the Indian needs. So we continued our discussions. We concluded the MOU in April 2013 last year. Our commitment to them, we are now a chartered member of EDX, and our commitment to them is to give our courses for global learners. We have given uh, two courses and two more are under design. One course by my colleague, Professor uh, Gaitonde on thermodynamics, 
and the other course on computer programming where the Professor Supratik Chakravarti and I gave that course. We had 20,000 and 60,000 learners in that. We have seen the power of that platform. It can sustain, it is scalable, and it is relatively easy to construct uh, courses on that. The only problem with all MOOCs is that the evaluation is always based on multiple choice questions. So long answers, long assignments are not possible. In programming type courses, which we conducted one, for example, we had an auto grader where people could upload their program files and they could be automatically evaluated. But in several other courses where you require long answers, you don't get them. It is towards this end that we had tried to popularize the concept of a blended MOOCs course where the students register for the online course, but the classrooms are used for discussions on problem solving. No lectures are given. We have conducted such blended MOOCs and flipped classroom course in IIT Bombay. Uh, Professor Kandan has been doing it for last four years, but we conducted it formally in the last semester and the previous semester for our major course, and we found that it works well. Simultaneously, Government of India wanted to develop its own offering online for the country. So we were asked to make a proposal. We have made a proposal for development of a platform which has now been named as Swayam, which actually stands for me or myself. That means the byline or tagline for the Swayam name is that my education, my decision. So basically students can decide which course they will take, which online course they will take from which university. Currently a committee has been appointed to try and see whether credits obtained by the MOOCs can be recognized by the universities and colleges. So that committee will give its verdict. A UGC committee has already recommended that it should be done. The other major problem with MOOCs is all online exams are unsupervised. So the certification even for passing out students uh, is given is called honor course certificate where I certify that I have not cheated. But if we know the kind of bills that are submitted for example, then we have no reason to believe that the student certification will be 100% correct and therefore universities may not recognize those certificates for credits. So what we have proposed is a blended model where the universities, if they say that these students can do this online course and will recognize the credits, the students will do the online course, but their online exams also will be supervised by the local teachers in the colleges. The teachers, of course, are free. They don't have to prepare for lectures. They don't have to set question papers. They only have to supervise online examining. So that's a model that is going. What is the relevance of all of that to us, our remote centers, and to our teachers? Twofold. One, increasing because the government is planning a very large rollout of SWAM. Already I have been asked to coordinate with 50 universities to get the best courses that their teachers will offer. And there is a large funding proposal which is under discussion at the ministry today to provide creation of 200 courses in various disciplines, not limited to engineering. One of the suggestions is that all the NPTEL work that has been done those uh, uh, videos can be taken. They could be repurposed if those teachers are interested because creating a MOOCs course is different. On MOOCs, you don't have one hour recorded lectures. You have eight to 10 minute recorded snippets because other than that, people don't see those uh, videos. There has been a statistical uh, uh, analysis of all. Please understand that in just last one and a half years, the amount of statistical analysis that has been done on the students' behavior on the MOOCs is more than the total analysis of students' behavior done in the entire history of humanity. And that is because in online participation, every keystroke of the participant is captured. I know exactly for what duration and what day and what time, which student watched which video, which student tried which practice problem, which student tried which quiz, all of that is recorded. It is not possible for us to humanly record this student behavior. So this is a gold mine of data which has been analyzed and pedagogical conclusions are now being drawn. Consequently, and also from the way the MOOCs have flourished all across the world, it is very obvious that increasingly the students will try to learn the best courses from the best places. 
Now, if the students are going to do that, the right thing for us teachers is to both help them to do that and to participate in some kind of blended MOOCs uh, thing. We shall therefore be including in every workshop from now onwards a small session describing what MOOCs are, how students all over the world are embracing MOOCs, and how MOOCs will be in your doorstep before you realize it. So as a teacher, what you should do to participate actively in the MOOCs. That is one thing. Second, in order to ensure that our teachers are fully familiar with the platform that will be used by most Indian students, we will be using Swayam as the base platform for all online activities from uh, uh, summer onwards. In fact, we'll see if it is possible, even in the pedagogical workshop, we might introduce this. Swayam has not been formally launched. Currently, it is called IIT Bombay Test Server. We have incidentally trained about 24 teachers from 12 universities who are designing courses as we speak. We have also trained 22 school teachers who are designing courses for nine standard science and maths as we speak again. All these courses online will be rolled out very So the online world is going to catch up in India as rapidly as it has been catching up with the rest of the world. And therefore our teachers particularly engineering college teachers, cannot be kept aside. Those of you who are interested can start reading from a site called edx.org. Education Extended is the name of that company, edx. They have open sourced their software on 1st of June last year. We have been using that software. We have modified it already. And we used it for, as I said, for our blended MOOCs operation. We are fashioning it for conducting our teachers training workshops as well. A new release has just come out from uh, EDX. Incidentally, the French National University for uh, uh, Online Education called uh, France Université Numérique has already launched it using this. Chinese people have interested this job, like IIT Bombay, there is an institution called Tsinghua University. They have already set up a company called Zetong X, and they have about 50 courses in Chinese being offered on the national platform, which is again built on EDX. India will be the third major nation using this platform, and this platform would be launched at any one time. Many of you may read this in the newspaper, so you should not be surprised. I thought I would tell you that. With respect to our workshops, as I said, if the Swayam is launched before January, it will be the Swayam platform on which our participants will be working for online uh, activities. If not, they will be working on IIT Bombay X platform. But they will, be f they will become familiar with the online courses. And in every workshop, I will be stealing a small session to appraise all participating teachers about the online activity. So this is just for your information. Now we can continue with our feedback. Sir, one question. Yeah. Uh, the name uh, IST workshop, the workshop should be changed to either a faculty development program or a short term training program. Because UGC is not allowing name workshop, they are not allowing the participants to enroll. So if it is called faculty development program. Yes, sir. OK. So that will be a good thing. Because it is training teachers. So either short term training program or faculty development program. Short term training program, is it? Yes, sir. So this is the nomenclature. Everybody agrees that this is the nomenclature? Yes. Sorry? Yeah, career, career development point. Uh, uh, Mukta, can we not change the name uh, immediately from this workshop itself? No, no, it's not a question of uh, brochure. It's a question of issuing certificate. So what we can do is when you start the wor workshop tomorrow or 2nd of uh, December, on first day itself you announce that uh, this workshop is being retitled as a short-term training uh, program for, for control. Faculty development. faculty development. Yeah. Okay, this workshop is being, because this is a faculty development program, 
the formal title is being re-christianed as faculty development program. Thank you, sir. And that uh, we can, uh, so we'll correspond. Yes, and we'll get it endorsed by uh, PRSG. We'll name it. So is the faculty development program name OK? Yes, sir. Or for administrative way, any change is required for this? No, we, no, no. I, I will, I will send a formal letter yes. saying that uh, uh, we have uh, decided to rename this primarily because the word workshop is not easily recognized by UGC. Therefore, we are recognized. And what I will say is, uh, I'll say we are also doing the same thing. We advise you to issue the certificates under the title of this, and I will also inform IST. That instead of workshop, we are calling them faculty development. Yes. And in fact, for good measure, I will also send a mail to uh, uh, Professor Mantha, Chairman AICT, so that there is no confusion. Sir, another point is hmm. that uh, to have the more impact of uh, remote center coordinators on the participants, uh, if you issue an uh, identity card, that is, uh, we are the remote center coordinators. <laughs> so yeah. that. That will be a responsibility of the coordinators also. That they you will see, to me also, the workshop team issues this card only. <laughs> so we have our identity cards of our respective institutions. I, I understand the purpose of your statement, but unfortunately, it will not be possible for either IIT Bombay or IIT Kharagpur to issue an identity card made for the purposes of one sponsored project. That will, that will not be possible. The motto was that we can, we can, we, we of we can course use is, we issue a letter. You can ask your local uh, college authorities to issue a separate note if you want. But that is not required really. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that during workshops uh, we can use that. Yeah. No, I understand. Thank you, sir. Yeah. IST has been calling these programs as STTPs. So, IST has been yes. calling these programs as STPs. Yes. For the so that's, that's a standard name. Yes. Yes, sir. Short-term training programs. Oh, I see. Instead of FDP, it is better you Instead call it. Instead of FDP, it is better to call them short term training program because that's a recognized word by IST. Yes, definitely. So then I think that makes sense because you see, I just realized that when I read, write to IST, see, we are issuing IST certificates under an MOU with IST. So it, we, it may be difficult to get a name which is not already existing in the realms of IST. So yes, if IST calls these workshops as short-term training programs, yes. then that is what we should call. Yes. But I understand that whether it is short-term training program or FDP, both are recognized by UGC. No, UGC use, uses FDP, huh. but IST has been using STTP. No, no, no. The question is, suppose I am a teacher in a college and I do this STTP, yes. then for my UGC recognized promotional norms, whether this is recognized or not. That yes, it is recognized. It is recognized. That's all. That was the question. Yes. Hello, because sir. we got some letters from participants saying that IST workshop, my college is not recognizing. But the short term training program word may be recognized. We will correct that. Sir, one more uh, things I want to add. Yeah. Uh, from my side. That is, uh, in sixth pay commission, it is written the queries like this that uh, two weeks uh, uh, STTP program should be covered by faculty member, right. but it should be AICT approved. So some colleges are finding AICT approved words in the certificates. We face this difficulty. So it, it is not it is not faced by most people because IST certification is AICT approved. Okay. Yeah. If there is a confusion, the, some people have written to me. I have written a clarifying letter marking a copy to Professor Mantha. Professor Mantha says that it is silly for me to issue any clarification because it is understood that IST certified things are accepted as AIST certified. Sir, as far as NIT is considered, huh. there are no new rules and regulations for promotion, interviews. There is no use of these uh, courses. Yes. That is quite possible. The fundamental purpose why we are conducting these workshops is to actually empower teachers. Certification is a byproduct. <laughs> so if uh, some people feel that the certification is the main product, they should go for some other scheme. That's why there is no any much more interest from NIT uh, institution. I agree. Uh. I was not looking forward from NITs 
for a larger participation as participants in the workshops because <laughs> NIT faculty members are actually quite well empowered. Achoo. But I was looking for a larger participation from NIT to be all our remote centers. Achoo. Sadly, only few NITs have joined in spite of letters from the ministry and others. But I'll be persuading more of them to join us. Because this is a very noble cause. If so many colleges are participating, all NIT should participate. A second question regarding uh, uh, account, sir. Haan. For TA, Haan. 100 kilometer is eligible. Yeah. If a participant is coming from 90 kilometers, yes. he is not eligible. But we have to provide stay for him. Yes. But as per the rule, he is not eligible for stay also. Okay. Then so let me let me put it this way: the figure hundred is a completely arbitrary figure. There is no sanctity. Is the government has not suggested this. Achha. We discussed this among ourselves, and we at wherever we had discussed this, we had said hundred kilometers. Last time no, I no no please. So the point is, if you think this hundred kilometers is not correct in your case, write a letter. We have done that as and please note this. Suppose there is somebody who lives 80 kilometers away or 90 kilometers away or 95 kilometers away or even 70 kilometers away. There was a case where a teacher was staying only 65 kilometers away but had to change four buses to reach the remote center. Yes, that is about it. When we got that letter, we immediately approved. There was not a problem. Last time my bill was not approved, sir. <laughs> That's it. No, so uh, Jaya, uh, this is something that you cannot go by the general rule. If there is an exception that they have stated, then that exception must be uh, uh, counted. No, I have informed to IIT Kharagpur that course was there, IIT Kharagpur. Oh. No, no. But you may not have informed this exception. No, I have informed them. I see. Because this so the anyway, uh, they were probably not aware of yeah, this. What was the reply? Since the, he is not eligible for TA, he is right. not eligible for stay. Right. That was the reply. See, please understand, once the rules are formed, the teams at both ends, have to comply with them. If everybody starts applying discretion, there could be great problem. So I apologize for this lapse. No, 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 but no, no, no. It is I, I take I take the credit. I also take the blame. <laughs> one one two eight. <laughs> one one two eight. So what I'll request my colleagues is to go back and sort this out, and to make this as a special case. In any case, the minutes of the meeting will say we will not change the word hundred for That's whatever true. good or bad reason. It has worked in most cases. But there would be exceptions, and I am advising all remote centers that if there is an exception, which you think is a genuine exception, but it must be genuine and it must be supported with some limit. Uh -huh. If that is done, then and you will know such a participant on uh, at the time of registration itself, as the person who registers or correspond with you. The moment you know, immediately pass on an information either to IIT Kharagpur or IIT Bombay, whatever the case may be. Okay. And we'll record that such exceptions will be handled acceptably. So this is not a problem. Uh, third question, can we increase the uh, stay of 175 to 250 like that? What is that? Uh, 175. Oh my God. Out of the four hours that I was grilled on the financial proprietary of my budget, one hour was spent on food and stay. No. So this is as per GFR. There is hardly anything that I can do about it. Achha. And uh, you are sending 5 lakh to the institution for purchasing new uh, things. When uh, that will be uh, you are sending, sir? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> sir, problem is if that is in the month of January, then we have to send the quotation that will take two months and March came. As soon as March came, uh, you will request us for settlement of fund, and that is not possible, sir. Yes, that is the problem. I will be I will be writing to you within in the first week of December, saying that such and such amount of money for procurement of any of the following equipment is being approved. These are the general specifications of the equipment. You are permitted to exceed these specifications if you so wish. You are permitted to buy all of these or part of it. You can spend more than 5 lakh rupees. Any excess amount of money that you spend will have to be spent by the institution. Up to 5 lakh rupees uh, uh, money will be reimbursed or will be given as an equipment grant to you. 
The actual release of grant cannot happen before the PRSG meeting, which will happen in end of December. But the letter will authorizing you to go ahead with the procurement will come in first week of December. You start the processing, and the day the funds are given to you, within two months we will expect the closure. Thank you, sir. We will Please. not be able to release funds to all the institutions. There are some issues with some of the institutions. For them, the funds may be released later, but that's okay. Sir, regarding uh, that financial part, yeah. I have a few suggestions and solutions. Yes. Uh, the titles of the workshops, the topic which we choose have to be so fantastic that uh, people are uh, more attentive to the workshop and yes. without lack of attendance, they attend it. Right. And uh, regarding food, the participants may not be willing to pay for the food. We can avoid that variable cost. And even the remunerations, uh, as uh, part of a remote center coordinator, I am ready to work even without remuneration. So that fixed cost will also go away. We can just charge just 200, maybe 200 per participant for institutional expenses. So, uh, and the workshops can be conducted in a self-sustained way. And uh, as participants pay 200, as well as only the interested people will register and they will attend the workshops. And if they submit the assignment, you give the certificates. Okay. And uh, one more thing is the timing of the workshop. As we start uh, exactly at uh, 9 or 9.30, we should finish by 5.30 if it is the schedule. If it is extended because of lot of interactions, the participants, uh, the ladies participants who require to reach the city from the outskirts, it takes a long time and they reach at 7, 8 and so on. So th that problem also exists. And uh, I have mentioned this earlier also in mails. And if it is maintained until 5.30 exactly, uh, that can be avoided by uh, avoiding unnecessary questions. Uh, some, uh, some centers, out of interest to, sh to show their participants to you or the faculty, <laughs> they, they frame some unnecessary questions and uh, show, show their uh, things to you. So uh, such things can be avoided and that will well, save time. Uh, yeah, I, I think both the sessions are good, so let me respond to each one of them. About timing, Professor, would you like to say something? I think we should be able to maintain strict timing. Timing, no? timing should be maintained. Yeah, yeah, timing. So I think all of us are agree, we will advise all the uh, uh, participating faculty that timings are as sacrosanct as in IIT Bombay. That means if a class is supposed to start at 8.30, you start at 8.30. But more importantly, we're supposed to end at 9.25, it will end at 9.25. will not end at 9.30. We'll ensure that. Uh, sir. Uh, sir, as you said, the faculty should pay 5,000 rupees and after the deliberation it comes out that the figure can be go down. So my suggestion is uh, we may ask half of the money from the faculty and half of the money can be bear by the institution because the institution is earning crores of rupees from the students <laughs> and they are doing nothing uh, with the student. They are not paying verdict, you can say. So why, why you cannot go other way around? You can ask UGC and AICT to screw them and so that they can start paying them. Uh, I think uh, if, if you are, what you are saying very crudely translates as follows. Yeah. Many of the institutions are minting money in their own ways. And you want the regulators in this country to control that behavior. Now, both these Targets. issues might be very pertinent to India, but they are not pertinent to our discussion here. <laughs> they, they, they do not relate to us. No. They, they only, you are trying to relate them by saying that your institution should bear the cost. Okay, that is what you are suggesting. My own experience is that in general, it's an impossible thing, howsoever noble it may be. Believe me, even IIT Bombay will not bear this cost. If there was no government funding, IIT Bombay would not have permitted me to recruit hundreds of people. IIT Bombay would not have permitted me to build a large lab. If I were to build a research lab, IIT Bombay will fund me. But this execution, even IIT Bombay, I'm saying IIT Bombay does not make crores of rupees on, on a donation or such account. We, we, can, we can add one thing, like, Corporate government is asking to no, do no. CSR yes, activity. Please, please, please. 
you are talking about ways and means which are much beyond either you and me to implement. I mean, okay, I know Chandra personally, I know all the CEOs, I can go to them. I have done a lot of fund collection for IIT Bombay. But I am not running a faculty development national scheme based only on the kind heart of the corporates. I am running it primarily because those many teachers need to benefit. And therefore, I have a limited scope that this is a government-funded project that I have. Government has wanted initiation of a sustainable program. I have to initiate that program within the bounds of this project, not outside it. And believe me, whenever you say whatever you are saying, unless I am made to pay something from my pocket, as long as I get it free, its value to me will not be much. I will not value something which comes free to me. That's a common human thing. That is true. So whatever else we may do, it is important that the participating teachers or their teachers should contribute funds. That, that much I will say. In terms of the uh, suggestion that you make, this was already made earlier. What other way of saying is, we had said 5,000 rupees as the fees at that point in time. And we had said this 5,000 rupees has the total, there are three components. One is the IIT hub component, the other is a fixed cost, and the other is a variable. Now, suppose we said that these are faculty development programs or short term training programs, but participants will have to make their own arrangement for tea and food. This is the canteen that we have in the tea break, you can go there, in the food time, you can go there. And everybody does that. If I am an employee and I am a, staff, a faculty member, I come every day to institute, I go home to eat my food or I get my dabba. So that's not a problem at all. What it means is immediately I can reduce the charges to be charged to participants from 5,000 rupees to 2,500 rupees. Secondly, the fixed cost also comes down significantly because now I expect a larger number of participants to be able to come if the cost is not 5,000 but 2,500. About your suggestion that the fixed cost could be brought down to zero because there is no need to give any honorarium, I have two possible objections on that. One is people like you and me will be there amongst us. All of us may agree that we will not take any honorarium. But does that program become sustainable in the long term? Second, if people are working, it is dishonorable to expect them to work free of cost perpetually. One thing was, uh, step show research program was conducted by Amal you must be knowing. Yeah, yeah. And that worked very well. And I had more number of participants than any of our IIT Bombay workshop. So how did you do the charging there? It was charged 200 for two days. Huh. And 60% uh, of the cost was taken by... Uh, the college and 40% was given back to remote center. I wish uh, the, the other colleges were as rich as Amal Jyoti. Uh, they, could, they could contribute that. So let us, let us put it this way. We all seem to be in the agreement that there has to be some charge. 5,000 is universally felt as very high and people will not come. 200, I believe, is too small an amount. That may be maximum 500. No, no. So, so is there, he is saying 200 rupees per day, you are saying, is it? I see, 100 rupees a day. Okay, so here is another model. The other model is, we say something like 150 rupees a day for a 10 day program, a 1500 rupees charge. The remote centers have to rationalize their fixed cost such that from these 1500 rupees, they will meet all the fixed costs that they have for the institution. And that will not serve any food or tea. People can make their own arrangement. Uh, food you have to provide, otherwise what will happen that you will not get any that these participants for this because the people used to come from outside. No, no, it's, outside. Not, it's not a question of provision, but the food can be provided at cost. It is not, it is not, but how much that will be, that food cost will be how much? No, how much is, whatever is the cost, that depends upon each individual place. Okay. There is nothing like a fixed cost. Sir, I have a suggestion. I have, I have this side. Okay. Yes. I have just uh, uh, taken down the, what are the amount that we are paying for honorarium. 
So for example, if we consider still we are paying for the honorarium that is RCC and WCC, that is uh, something 26,000 rupees. Uh, AVU coordinator, system administrator, whatever the technical staff, we combine it because AV coordinator can work as a system administrator and all those things. That will be the 5,000 rupees. If we require teaching assistant for 30, we can have a one teaching assistant. That will be 5,000 rupees. And for support staff, it is a 2,000. So it goes to 38,000. Right? And whatever the miscellaneous uh, account that you are talking about and 10,000 rupees for the institution, miscellaneous account that pan, that is pad, pain, some bags, so, because from next workshop we have uh, already decided. So that cost goes to 48,000. So it is that total cost will be reduced to 1,600 for 10 days. So it is 160 rupees for that. So institution can bear that uh, uh, other cost also. Let me, let me once again say, these figures that he just mentioned and these are the figures that we have been operating with are not sacrosanct. These were decided in a meeting similar to this conducted long time ago. That time also it was decided primarily with my suggestion that we should not take anybody's work free of cost and therefore we should respect that and pay some honorary. These amounts were arbitrary then, these amounts are arbitrary now. However, we have two years of experience and we have two years of experience which is a mixed bag. There are places where honorarium is not paid to the people who have worked. There are places where honorarium is misadjudicated. Now, these are bad instances. There are good instances. There have been colleges which uh, the heads of the institutions have come and told me, Professor Patak, don't pay any honorarium because in our institution, it is recognized the duty for every faculty member to participate in such thing. We don't pay any honorarium to faculty members who participate in similar other events. If we pay honorarium to such people, it is creating a bad precedent. So this has been a problem. All, now what has happened is, because we made a universal rule and applied it everywhere, all institutions had to undergo the same. Instead of that, if we go over to a model where we say a fees or charge is fixed, this fees or charge will be collected and paid directly to the local institution. It is entirely up to the local institution to do what they wish to do with that charge. IIT Bombay does not come into picture at all. It is for each remote center to decide how to use that fund. IIT Bombay's expectation is if you charge this money, the remote center must function properly during the workshop. That's all. You, you get the point. What we could do is to facilitate the smooth transition. We could inform whatever model we adopt, and we could inform the head of the institution that these are currently, this is our costing model, this is the honorarium that is paid to people depending upon the work involved, and in this model we are tweaking it to make it self-sustaining like this. Now the institution may take its own decision in which way they want to go ahead with it. But if it is possible that instead of we, we need to announce a lump sum fees. We cannot announce a per day fee or something like that. But if we run, a workshop will be run in either one of the two modes. That is, either full two weeks face-to-face -face or one week face-to-face, -face, that is six days face-to-face -face and the remaining days online. In which case, the cost may come down further. So instead of 2,500, it could be as much as 1,500 for a 10-day workshop and uh, let us say 900 rupees for a six day festival. Both are two week workshops. But this, this is the cost model. Do you think this cost model is better? Sir, one more second. Yeah. We have already conducted more than 10 workshops. So what I just find out that whenever there is an application or portal open, there will suppose 100 applications entered for a one week workshop. But actually, when the people comes for attending a workshop, that figure comes down to round about 50 or 60. Right. Because it is a free offer. Correct. So we can divide our course into two ways. One will be the application charge. Correct. That is non refundable. That is non refundable. Remaining charge we can take for first day of the thing. So that will be so. Yeah. I think uh, that is how many organizations make money. Uh, 
application form for a job. There are 10 jobs, 1 lakh applications. The application form costs 100 rupees. So I think they recover money but for all the people whom they will employ for next 10 years. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, no. It's a Sorry? <laughs> oh, you want IIT Bombay to do the accounting of 10,000 transactions? Uh, sir, uh, all these discussions what we are making on reducing the cost, that is one thing we can adopt uh, after uh, finalization. Hmm. The other thing is we can make the programs attractive. Yes. Uh, that is one thing. There are uh, many redundants because the, the uh, resource persons are excellent. There is no doubt about it. There are some redundancies we can reduce and then yeah, the programs sure. can be made five or six days maximum. In whatever case, some part it is online or it is offline, something we can make some, uh, some modifications. That is yeah. one thing. Two so week is very difficult to sustain. That is what many teachers Yes, yes. That's, that's, that's right. the other thing. Right. And timings also we have discussed in metro cities, four o'clock, almost all the colleges, they close down. And after, if you run up to 5.30, then there will be no transportation available from the college side. So that is a major problem we can think of. Uh, uh, 4.30 maximum, we can run the workshops. We have, we have been told, particularly in the east and northeast, yes. we have a major problem where the evening happens much earlier than the rest of the country. Yeah. So yes. maybe we can think of starting earlier at 9 sharp and conclude by 4. Yes, sir. That could be a better idea. See, the right hand side wants to start at 9.30, the left hand side wants to stop at 4. <laughs> how, 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 do I, how do I combine these two? I don't know. We can even start at 9 o'clock. Okay. Yes, sir. sir. And the last question, sir. Yeah. Uh, these certificates, anyway, uh, uh, it is issued by uh, the highest authority in India and then should be honored. Many colleges, managements, the, uh, the honoring these certificates, what we see is, is not seen, what is expected. That means there must be, we can make a proposal, we request you to make a proposal to agencies, AICT, UGC, like these are significant workshops attended by the participants, must be honored in terms of benefits to the participants. Say if we attend some two or three workshops in a year, it must be honored as additional increment to the management, it can be proposed. No, we cannot make any such proposal, but there, is, there are already a set rules in which these certificates are supposed to be factored, and that we have already agreed to change the terminology. I take your point. Yes, sir. Take your point. If it is honored that way, we can, we can make any type of fees, many participants, we can, we can have the, uh, that's the, apart from knowledge gaining, this is another benefit. I, I appreciate yes, sir. it. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Uh, there is one request from our side to organize workshops on the topics like image processing, embedded systems, or cloud computing by involving other IITs also, like IIT Kanpur, IIT Chennai. Image processing, embedded systems, embedded systems, and cloud computing. Because many people are doing their research huh. for their MTech and PhD level. Data analysis. Big data analysis. Big data analysis is also a very good chapter. By involving other faculties from IITs, at IIT Chennai, IIT Kanpur. No, no, we have absolutely no problem. Why IIT? I mean, if there is a great professor who is well known in NIT or any college in Jarsapura, yes, we are most welcome to come and participate. We, we have had a few proposals from some people, but when we investigated, it turned out that the person was very passionate, but not really very competent to handle uh, 10,000 teachers. However, we have, for example, research methodology, we went all the way and invited Professor Sripat Karmalkar from IIT Madras. Yes. So we have absolutely no issue. Okay. We want the best teachers in the country or anywhere in the world to come and contribute to the betterment of our teachers. And IIT Kharagpur has been also inviting people who are not necessarily with IIT Kharagpur. No. IIT Bombay or IIT Kharagpur have no such penchant for you know keeping things to ourselves. Never. Okay. Thank you. Sir. We want the best teachers to come. Sir, I About like the to... subjects that you mentioned, it may not be possible to cover these subjects because our mandate is very specifically 
to contribute to the basic courses in engineering and science. Because that is where the government feels, and I also agree, largest number of teachers are involved. So anything which will benefit the largest number of teachers across the community of engineering and science colleges is our priority. However, we can always experiment with other subjects. Now, here is a chicken and egg story. I have approval for conducting 15 workshops as per this budget. If I get into a self-sustaining mode and prove that that works out successfully, I'll be able to conduct more such workshops on different subjects. Otherwise, the project will close after we complete the 15 and from next year onwards, the government will not fund it. So all our dreams of going across to multiple disciplines will remain back. My suggestion is that in the next summer, amongst the workshops that we conduct, we'll try at least one, if not two workshops on some kind of a self-sustaining model. The subject that I propose, which people have correctly mentioned, that the workshop must be attractive both in terms of its reach and in terms of its conduct. If you recall, we had conducted the workshop on research methodologies very early as an experiment workshop. We have got many more ideas by conducting that workshop and now it is a full-fledged subject. I suggest that we conduct a workshop on research methodologies this summer, which could be the first workshop for the self-sustaining model. In the self-sustaining model, I believe that a majority of teachers will participate in that workshop and let that become the benchmark for our subsequent workshops in December that we'll create. Is that okay with you? Sir, I would like to suggest one topic also for the workshop. Ah, please. That may be for the IPR and pattern related processes. So that will be better and that will be useful for all the faculties. IPR related and uh, patent filing process. And another thing is uh, many private institutions. The major IPR violation in India is happening primarily, unfortunately, because of our teachers. Do you know that in terms of plagiarism, yes. India is considered number one today, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, that's a very sad number one to have. You know. <laughs> there are IEEE warnings, there is a, there is a list by the way, you might want to go back and examine whether your college is in that list. There are, I was shocked to see some of the names. These are the names of the colleges from which teachers have published papers plagiarizing contents left, right and center. So I think a, a workshop on IPR is very, very good idea. Yes, sir. Probably patents, sir, patent strange. filing process also. No, no, I know, I know. I was just joking, but the the issue of IPR, so what we could do is, see, a two-week workshop on IPR alone is very difficult to sustain. The reason Short. why, one second, the reason why we want to maintain a two-week model is because what uh, AICT and IST told me at that time is that a two-week short-term course is a recognized uh, component in any one of the advancement, career advancement, etc. But what we could do is, we could combine a whole lot of things around IPR. For example, plagiarism is an IPR violation. Intellectual property is not only for commercial benefits, it's also for these benefits. Sir, so, I have noted this. Hmm. Uh, we, we, if, if we will find out who are the best people to speak on this and what kind of course can be... some ideas about the patent uh, filing process also, sir. Yes. That will be also beneficial. Yes. <laughs> Sorry? It comes to everything in the same. It, I think it will ITX. come into this one, same category, IT Act. IT Act, cyber crime. Yeah. Sir. Not the technology of cyber security, but the act and legal aspects of it. Legal aspects. Yeah. Sir, one more thing. Regarding the model, uh, many private institutions runs the workshop uh, and they, they keep that at the discretion of the institute that uh, whatever the fees is collected, they are distributing it like 40% uh, to the institute infrastructure, usage of institute infrastructure, and 60% they distribute amongst the staff. Right. So that type of model can be uh, uh, finalized and it can be kept at the discretion of the institute that how they are going to collect the fees, how much amount they are going to collect the, uh, this thing from their participants, and they can distribute the honorarium accordingly. Yeah, so that I, have, can be also I, have, yeah I have no problem in institutions deciding 
what honorarium to pay, not to pay, whatever, whatever, and the distribution uh, component, etc. I have a problem in differential fees for the same workshop across the country. You fix it. Nee. So that is what needs to be fixed. Yes, we are directly that IID is not taking any charge. So <laughs> that, that is totally free from IID from the side. So institutions can decide how much they will take from the participants. <laughs> no. Uh, no. No, that will not wash. IIT Bombay, please understand that the workshop is announced by IIT Bombay. It announces a list of remote centers, but it cannot say that the fees at each remote center is so and so. If the fees at each remote center is so and so, everybody would like to register for the lowest cost uh, remote center. That is, not, that is not a practical suggestion. That is one of the reasons why we are having so much discussion on the amount is because that amount has to be same across the country, whatever it is, good, bad or ugly. As you express your concern regarding the research in uh, a status of research in our country, so uh, as you see the new uh, six pay commission in that they have put more marks on the uh, research side also from faculty. So we are focusing right now on their uh, teaching skill. So, but it is very well said that great researcher cannot be a great teacher and vice versa. Not necessary. Not necessary. It's not true always. So, I don't generalize either way. No, 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 it is a wrong <laughs> statement. So, there are bad teachers who are also bad researchers. <laughs> so, my, my thing is, IIT is doing very well in research. They are publishing good paper, filing good patent. So, why uh, IITs cannot, cannot uh, come out and uh, extend their facility, not facility exactly, but their intellectual ability, to the lower institution. Let's say if somebody is very positive about research, but he could not get the help, right in terms of writing paper, in terms of accessing some equipment. So why you cannot have a uh, program or a one short of self self sustaining model? I can suggest in that uh, some faculty can join a particular research topic and then have a deliberation. Yes, this is again a byproduct coming out of our interaction. Mm -hmm. I, I have advised both IIT directors and others, that this is the desire of the participating teachers. Very essential. Yeah, but yeah, so we, we understand that. However, I would like to restrict our discussion right now to what we should do with our model. And while doing changes into our model, how can we facilitate such greater interaction as you mentioned at a later point in time? The most important thing is, if the project closes next year, and all interaction between the IIT system and the remote centers and the 10,000 teachers stops. Please also appreciate that all this discussion that you are doing has primarily come out of the fact that so many teachers have interacted with the IIT system in the last two years very extensively. They know like in which field, which are the teachers who are working. That is the initial part. If that interaction stops completely, Further build-up will be difficult. So first thing is to continue this training program. Second thing is to build on it as you suggested. My feeling is that let this be a part of the discussion in the research methodologies course. We'll put a panel discussion on how, I would not say IIT system, but I would say how top recognized researchers in the country in various academic institutions can help other teachers in the other institutions in terms of setting up the corn. I think we will put that as a topic there. That is agreed. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank Hello, you. sir. In mechanical engineering, there are traditionally three specializations, thermal design and uh, manufacturing. Yes. So design and manufacturing is absolutely untouched by enemy ICT. So what I feel that uh, some course on design engineering or maybe uh, manufacturing, um, it is the this is one thing the other important thing which i want to mention here is that uh, we were talking about the certificate the certificate these certificates which are issued to us these are useful only in the career and adver career advancement schemes people i mean we should understand that this should these are not issued to uh, to to give any kind of additional increment right. somebody was talking about right, the right, additional right. increment right, right. so these are certificates which are not issued 
to get the additional so increments. No, that is not the intention also and that I we am. cannot say anything and about. There is a misunderstanding no. about this. First. No, that is a localized misunderstanding. Don't worry. <laughs> I think sir, people understand it. Sir. I want to suggest a topic for next workshop. Yes. Uh, I have attended that workshop three years back and that is Python, SDS. And that time we had around 40 remote centers and the feedback was good about done by Professor Madhur Balor and Pich, Professor Pichai. So that workshop, if that could be done again. Uh, the problem is that that workshop is extremely good for the students and prospective programmers. For teachers, is there a great value in that workshop? That is the question. So the answer is that value is there provided that teachers, we talk, we are talking about certificates. Right. The main aim of these workshops is to take the knowledge and deliver it to the students. Correct. So when students are talk, uh, we are talking about Python, when faculty comes to these workshops, they deliver back to students, not for their own. Yes. So you think that large number of faculty members will be interested? Yes. However, that workshop, if I'm not mistaken, was conducted or... Five weekend. weekend. Weekend workshop. Five weekend. Yes. Five weekend. And uh, you think that could still be popular? Sir, so the, the reason we had that workshop is that the, we saw st faculty coming even on Sunday also, taking an off, right? Five Sundays, they were sacrificing their Sundays. So they were genuine participants who are coming to attend that. They came to attend. Yes, uh, that was uh, one of the best workshops that I remember that we have conducted over the last three years. Well, that's a good point because, uh, I mean, computer programming in general is considered an introductory topic. Yeah. And if Python programming, and I know Python programming is important. In fact, the entire EDX platform, by the way, is done using Python. Python. And sir, plus we can include the open source yeah. as well. So yeah. Python is open, some knowledge about open source, which faculty should know about. The point that he is making is, he is also reminding us of a workshop where participating teachers came for five weeks on Sundays, spending their own time. Now. I, what I take, what I distill from his statement is not Python, but what I distill from him is if a course is doubly meaningful, where a certificate could be useful for career, but the knowledge is useful directly for me, then the faculty members are perhaps more enthused to attend it. That is the thing that... And I sir, we can it. start off with the pilot project of self-sustainable no, the, on that case. We will, we will see what to do. For the IST certification, this is the model that we are following. Please understand that when we offer the financial assistance, it is not only during the workshops, but it is also on other occasions when in any interaction is framed that the remote centers are required to make that infrastructure available. One such suggestion which was made by Parth uh, Professor P.P. Uh, Chakravati, Director of IIT Kharagpur when I met him last, is something on the lines of what he said, that to foster research interaction, can we have focused seminars on Sundays on a specific topic? So we can take heat transfer, for example, we can take solar energy or whatever, and we could have a weekly three-hour discussion, an exposition by the top researcher, and interaction and question answers by the faculty member. So there could be a Sunday workshop on a topic, which is primarily for research. This is not for certificate, no funding, no nothing. But we would expect remote centers which are funded by this equipment and all to make the facility available on Sunday for such work. Yes, possible, sir. Yes, possible, possible. Now that would, that, would, that would go a long way to build the research relationship also. Your sir, one more suggestion. Yeah. Can we open this workshop for everyone, the faculty? The, those are yeah, yeah. The, the one day yes. workshop that I'm mentioning, uh. It is for the degree college. They are running the MSc Computer Science Electronics. No, no, no. Please let me speak. For the one day workshop that I mentioned for research interaction, yeah, absolutely, this is not for a certificate. Yeah. This is not funded by the government. This is meant for knowledge exchange. A second year student who is interested in research can participate. A science college teacher from a neighboring college can participate. Anybody who is interested can participate. An 80-year-old retired scientist wishes to interact can participate. There is absolutely no risk. By the way, the restriction in the participation for the teachers is primarily because the IST workshops are conducted with IST certification in mind. And this is meant for the teachers who teach those subjects. But any other program that we do, including a Python program which might do outside IST, for example, 
that will not be limited only to teach it could be for students it could be for others it could be for professionals whatever in fact we might even suggest that uh, suggestion that somebody made that different colleges may charge different fees depending upon their cost supposing i have a two day workshop on saturday sunday and for python as you say and we'll say iit bombay will conduct this workshop there is no fees to be paid to iit bombay but local college may charge any fees for the local cost 25 rupees 30 rupees 100 rupees 500 rupees they will register with the local colleges that's all even even for the research seminars i would not like to keep it free if i am a researching student or a young teacher and i want to participate in a research seminar on let's say photovoltaic cell where professor zuzer wasi and others are going to discuss research problems i would expect you to ask me to pay 50 rupees or 100 rupees to attend that to participate no certificate is just cost of attending that workshop i think that would be possible isn't it right so we'll keep that in mind so is that is it agreeable that we conclude at least this part of the discussion by saying that we will conduct at least one workshop this summer towards the self sustaining model in this workshop we shall not pay institutions anything but we'll ask the participants to pay a fixed amount of money it is more like 1500 rupees or 1000 rupees and if this workshop is one one week equivalent online and one week face to face then the charges could be about 1000 rupees for the two week workshop this 1000 rupees are to be paid directly to the institution but the institution that is remote center is accountable to iit bombay in so far as conduct of the workshop is concerned and distribution of the certificates is concerned is that okay respected sir i would like to add one uh, more topic like cognitive radio radio resource management Sorry? we had organized cognitive radio radio resource management sir uh, this is cognitive? a research topic and the research is going uh, on the research is going on uh, iit khadakpur so very esoteric topic i had not even heard of it but i will learn more about it cognitive radio Achha, for the research topic sir yes yeah, sir cognitive okay. radio sorry what is your coordinator get the burden to do all the things during the workshops hmm. now in the recent workshop which is of two week pedagogy hmm. you have converted only one post rc coordinator if possible please incorporate rc coordinator and workshop coordinator i'll not touch the remuneration part whatever you can give hmm. second thing avu coordinator you have put avu coordinator not system analyst system analyst is the person who is providing all the things who is providing us the avu coordinator also can you incorporate system administrator oblique avu coordinator and rc coordinator and workshop coordinator i will not touch the remuneration part okay. thank you okay let's break for tea and come back okay. again